Mike Johnson uh, is a weird religious anti-gay zealot, but he has a plan to keep the government open. I know, surprising, I didn't know Republicans wanted the government open, but will it work? Um, he uh, last, uh, last week, excuse me, he sent a letter to his colleagues and Johnson laid out an aggressive timeline to pass individual funding bills. He wrote that if another stopgap measure is needed to extend government funding beyond the November 17th deadline, I would propose a measure that expires on January 15th or April or April 15th based on what can what can obtain conference consensus to ensure the Senate cannot jam the house with a Christmas omnibus. In other words, I'm going to do a continuing resolution without calling it continuing resolution. In other words, I'm going to keep funding the government, but I'm not going to call it keep funding the government. Um and he's hoping that again, we're just punting, kicking the ball down the road a little bit um, and hoping that maybe Republicans will get on board and that November 17th shutdown deadline can be averted. Um, recall that McCarthy's rivals claimed they opposed a continuing resolution to keep the government open, offering instead a right wing government funding bill full of cuts and extraneous policy considerations that the Senate and President Joe Biden would have to swallow or else face a government shutdown, um, which they wouldn't just acquiesce to you. Um, what's interesting about this new bid is that he's probably going to need Democrats to, to sign this continuing resolution. The new speaker is gonna need Democrats to vote to keep the government open. And then he's gonna have to make sure that the Republicans don't get mad at him that he relied on Democrats to keep the government open. You see what we're doing or trying to not do or the needle we're threading. So what's gonna happen? Um, many Republicans are likely to vote against the continuing resolution, but as long as they don't retaliate against Johnson for leaning on some Democratic votes to pass it, Congress will be good in good shape to avert the shutdown on November 17th. Again, if Matt Gates doesn't sort of, you know, wake up on the wrong side of the bed and is like, I vote to vacate, motion to vacate. Um, Marjorie Green said, I didn't vote for any of the CRs before, so that's not what I'm interested in. Uh, and Matt Gates said, and this is interesting, Senator, I think Mike Johnson has a lot more credibility that a bridge would be a bridge to a single subject spending bills, not a bridge to just the old ways of Washington that empowered McCarthy's lobbyist donors. Now, so it sounds like Gates maybe will give Mike Johnson the benefit of the doubt. It also sounds like we're gonna go, what, like a new budget bill by new budget bill by new like single subject spending bills. Does this not seem like a really ineffective way to pass a government budget? So that's gonna take forever with these fools, with these fools. Anyway, give me your thoughts on, um, it seems like they're giving him a little bit of grace. This new yeah. speaker. Well, Matt Gates understands he don't want to totally overplay his hand. I mean, he didn't threw that 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 grenade already. Uh, doing it back to back like this, I think for him it's a calculus. Not that he certainly has found religion, but it's a strategic <laughs> calculus not to do the newly minted speaker this way so soon. Right. But make no mistake about it, this foundation within the GOP is on sand. It's on sinking. Sand yeah. is being held together by a thread and barely a thread, and it could change at any moment. But Matt, Matt Gates is doing what's right for Matt, Matt Gates, and it is not the time to 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 pull what he put on McCarthy uh, just yet, Francesca. So that's why he just kind of you know stepping back now to the point of that you just made about how we run in this government. <laughs> they got one job, just one. And they can't even do this right. And this is even before the nuclear, so called nuclear type option of the new uh, GOP caucus. I'm talking about years and years. We can, they continue to have continuing resolutions to run the government of America. Do you understand this? These fools wouldn't know how to set up a budget that could last the entire budget cycle if it was sitting in the chair next to them. No. And we should all be disturbed. That this is how governance is going on in the United States and that this is not new. It's been happening even before we got to this dire moment. It Absolutely. really is a damn shame. It's gonna be very interesting also to see them try to like pass things like taking away food stamps and any kind of, um, you know, again, uh, nutrition assistance during the holidays. That's, gonna be, that's just gonna be cute. You know, I'm just like interested in that, you know, um, for the pure Ebenezer factor of it all. Uh, one of the things, of course, is aid to Ukraine. Um, and it seems like, again, hardline Republicans do not want any more money going to Ukraine, but they do want 
tons of money going to Israel. Problem is, President Biden is putting before them a bill that lumps them together, money for Israel and money for Ukraine. Um, I think us progressives would have <laughs> a different thought about how we want to separate that out. But McConnell, uh, Mitch McConnell said he wants to keep military aid to Ukraine and Israel tied together because he views those conflicts as part of, of a larger global threat. Johnson says he wants to bifurcate the issues of Ukraine and Israel. And he signaled early support for a stopgap funding bill that would include steep cuts to non-defense spending, which Democrats say would have no chance of passing the Senate. Again, remember when they're proposing all these general cuts, for some reason, the Department of Defense is like, oh no, you get carved out. You get like a little, you get a, you know, sort of a get out of a cuts free pass. You get a hall pass. Um, which is just so cruel. Um, Johnson, however, seems like maybe, and this was according to a new interview that he did with uh, Sean Hannity, may, that he doesn't oppose supporting the war in Ukraine. He heartened some Republicans uh, when he told Fox News host Sean Hannity that we, quote, can't allow Putin to prevail in Ukraine. So that's very different from other Republicans who are like, Putin seems chill. Uh, he echoed McConnell's argument that Putin's aggression threatens the rest of Europe and that failing to stop Russia would be probably encourage and empower China to perhaps make a move on Taiwan. So, and, and he's not quite MAGA, 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 Nina. He's, he McConnell, MAGA, McConnell, MAGA. He's, he's, got, he's got a little bit of a dance going on here. Um, and you can hear that in the ways that he is, again, sort of a neocon, um, you know, ratcheting up anti China stuff. Um, and then also, again, supporting this, the, the more money to Ukraine. Whereas I truly believe most of the Republican Party has been bought by the Russian government, if not overtly through multiple dark money sources. But final thoughts on this. I mean, geopolitical considerations are important. We should be having those debates. But where I wanna center this conversation where they never are able to seem to come together is to help the American people domestically. I wish that they thought highly of re reinstating the enhanced child tax credit or giving people in this country paid and family medical leave or having Medicare for all, all of those things that help keep tranquility mm. in these United States of America. Francesca, that is what galls me, that they can't come together for those kinds of things, but they certainly can come together to enhance the military industrial complex, which ultimately doesn't get any of us anywhere if it is played out to its ultimate end, which right. is destruction. You know, don't look up comes to mind too. A big shout out to David Sirota on on that. I, I don't. I just. I don't. I don't get it. Why can't we cancel uh, cancel a student debt? And you know, U.S. Secretary Janet Yellen. I'm never going to forget it and let let them live this down. She said, "Oh yeah, we can afford we can afford it. We two can wars. It. Oh baby." For any of that neoliberal and 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 neo fascism crew who always ask the question, how are we gonna pay for it? That is gonna be the quote of the century for me, Francesca. Yes. I'm always I'm just keep pulling out what, what US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said. It's we a can meme at this two wars. Like we gotta memify this, you know? Yeah, it's we just do. like, hey, uh healthcare, we can afford we it, can afford you know? It. That's it. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.